So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove the air duct for the air box. Next step, we're going to pull the air box out. So you remove your needed lines. Unplug your mass airflow sensor and you can move this out of the way. And then you have three clips back here. And this can come off. You want to be careful for this coolant line because it does overlap. But if you slide forward and then out, you won't actually have to unhook it. Next step for the air box is you have two eight millimeter bolts that you have to take out. There's one in the front and there's another one in the back. So then after you get your two eight millimeter bolts out, you just slide toward the engine. You just slide toward the engine and then out. So the next we have to pull our wheel well liner out. For this truck, the wheel well liner bolt, um, is held in with pop clips underneath the fender flare. So Step one is pulling the fender flare. To do that, we have to remove our corner light. Um, it does. It just has to come up. If you feel underneath, you can feel the clip forward as well. And out. And we can take that off for now. So after you take this light off, you're going to take off the two Torx bolts from here, and then there's also another one on the bottom of the fender flare. And then what you're going to do is you have to take the pop clips from underneath. Next, we have to get all the clips out from behind the fender flare. Um, this can be a little tricky. The clips themselves are pretty strong, so you have to pull pretty hard. So what I usually do is I'll start on this end, and I'll start working my way back, and then I'll get a tool to try and disengage the clips. Um, unfortunately, these clips are a lot stronger than the flare itself, so if you just pull, the chances of you breaking it are pretty good. So you want to make sure you have one of those trim cool kits? Yeah, so you want to make sure you have a, a plastic trim tool kit um, that can reach down and unhook un that can reach down and unhook each clip. Also, if you wanted to, um, you could also tape along this edge so then you could pry a little bit. So now we're gonna take all the pop clips off for the inner fender well. One trick for getting these clips off is to put a little pressure from behind so that you can grab the threads and they'll pop off. So after we get the five outer pop clips, there's seven pop clips in the inner wheel well that you have to get off so that we can remove this wheel well completely. To get to the inner pop clips, our range is lifted so there's a little bit more room. Um, if you want to make more room for yourself, you can definitely take the wheel off and make it a lot easier. So next step, we're gonna pull this cover. Uh, it's just held in with clips, so you just have to pull it outwards. Um, if you can't get good grip, you can also use a trim tool to work it under to work it out underneath. What you're going to do is you're going to take this template, you're going to cut out the center, and then you're going to line up the center edge as best you can with the cutout on your fender, and you're going to line up the center mark of that hole with the hole that's already there. Alright, ready? Yep. There's a windshield washer fluid line that runs along the back side of this fender where we're going to drill this hole, so I'm just moving that out of the way so you don't drill a hole in your windshield washer fluid line. We just let it dangle down, you can see it right here. Uh, that's really dark. Okay, yeah. I was just held on with a pop clip. Yeah, there's two pop clips. I just, there's two pop clips that go into the back side of the fender there. There's one there, there's one right here. 
So what, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take your other template that goes on the inside of your fender. You're gonna cut out these two holes up top here on the paper and then line those up. Once those are lined up, you're going to put these in place. One thing that you need to do for both templates is there is a mark that is labeled on each one of them. You're gonna take a tape measure or a set of calipers and measure that to ensure that this is printed out at the correct scale for you. That way you don't accidentally cut your truck in the wrong place. You're gonna to wanna to buy metallic hole saw or a bimetal hole saw. Um, any, any one of them will do, and as long as it's four inches, it'll go through there. You gotta take your time with these. They like to kind of grab and spin your drill around. Hold on to your drill pretty tight. Don't press too hard on it. Like don't put too much force on the hole saw. Just let it kind of do its thing. There it goes. You're gonna wanna take a file or something and this has a lot of sharp burrs on the back side of it. So you're gonna to wanna to take a file and deburr all this, make it nice and smooth. So one more hole you need to center punch is this one. Center punch and, and drill. Flashlight. Center punch and drill. We have a template here. It has like a slight bend in it. And that's just so that uh, you can get a center punch hole for your hole saw. Just put that on there. I like to use a clamp, but you don't have to. Okay. And then we'll just center punch this. There's our center punch hole right there. We'll drill a pilot hole. And then we'll uh, do the hole saw. There you go. Get all the little fuzzy plastic pieces off of it. This is just some 220 grit sandpaper. It doesn't have to be 220. Um, 320, 120. Just, just something to knock the sharp edges off. All right, so if you have the Mishimoto airbox and you purchase our snorkel, we'll include a template to drill out your airbox. Just line it up with that little yeah, groove Yeah, you there. just get yourself a four inch hole saw and just line it up with the little circle on the template. To make things easier, you can even center punch this. Um, so your, win your windshield washer line that you popped off, you're simply going to put that back in. It's two pop clip location. Yeah. So before installing this bracket, we're going to install this gasket. You can line up the holes for your three bolts that'll go through the bracket. We're going to install the bracket to the inside of the fender. And you'll align your two holes. and install your rivets. Put the rivet in. So now we have our bracket installed, we're gonna mount the outer portion of the snorkel to the bracket. Uh, included with the hardware is a threaded rod. The threaded rod is gonna go on the side closest to the back of the Ranger. Um, this is just going to help you align it to the car since we're going to take the rest of our hardware and we're going to have to reach into the fender well and you will thread two bolts into here and then there'll be a nut for this thread here. Pivot on that rod and find our threads from the inside. Once you get one threaded, it gets a little bit easier. And then finally, you'll put your nut on the threaded rod that we put on earlier. So once we have the two bolts and the nut hand tightened, 
we could take our 10 millimeter wrench and tighten everything down. So here we're gonna install the inner snorkel tube into the car. Um, in order to do so, we're gonna take the provided bolts with the plastic washers. Um, these bolts are gonna thread through these holes and into these threads here. So what we'll do is we'll feed this up and in. You can see the threads through the holes. So you just have to feel for the threads with the bolt. So these two bolts can just be hand tight. And what we'll do is we'll install this side next. So in order to hold the inner snorkel tube to the airbox side, you're gonna use the worm gear clamp with the provided J hook. And the worm gear clamp's gonna go around the J hook. This J hook is then gonna get bolted with the supplied hardware to this bolt hole, which was drilled with the template. This can stay loose for now, since we are gonna still move everything around and get everything centered. Um, you can then feed your worm gear up and around the J hook and then around the inner snorkel tube. Next, you're gonna install this tube along with the silicone coupler. You have to make sure that this silicone coupler is sealed all the way around to the inner snorkel tube. If you're having a tough time getting the silicone coupler in between the inner snorkel tube and the aluminum pipe that goes to the air box, you can take a small flathead screwdriver and gently press on the, the coupler itself. So we want to make sure that the worm gear clamp is around the J-hook before tightening it down. So here we have our inner grommet. This grommet is going to go into the hole that was drilled earlier in the air box. So here we have the plug to block off the stock air intake. We have the air box out of the car, but this can be done in the car as well. Uh, to start, we're going to remove this. It's two 8mm bolts that hook up to the rad support. And then you just twist and pull. And that can be removed. Uh, next step is you're going to take off the top half of the air box with the air filter. So here we have the plug. Uh, the Mishimoto symbol is going to face outward as well as the tabs. So finally, it will look like this. And then we'll feed the air box down and in and just center your tube onto the grommet and then you just want to work it in until you can see that your threads for where the air box was unbolted are lined up again here and here. So here we're going to take the stock bolts and reinstall the lower half of the air box. You want to make sure that these clips are folded down because if while you're feeding it in this clip can get kind of jammed under here and then when you go to put your upper air box in you're not going to be able to clip it in. Solid tip. That's a pro tip right there. Solid tip. tip from the person who's done it like three times already. <laughs> now that we have our air box in and that tube is centered we can tighten that worm gear clamp underneath to hold everything in. Now that we have the snorkel fully installed, we can install the snorkel head with the included T-clamp. Okay, so we have the snorkel almost completely installed. The last thing we have to do is install this little bracket that goes on the A-pillar. Um, we're gonna use the bracket to actually lay out where the holes go. And we recommend that you put a strip of like painter's tape or something here um, to keep from scratching your paint. So. You have to bolt the bracket to the snorkel first using these bolts that we included with the kit. You have to get it going with your fingers and then get like a little uh, an Allen wrench in here to tighten it. 
So you'll notice that these holes in the bracket are slotted. We do that so that you have some adjustability. Um, what I like to do is I like to mark, make my mark on the center of the slot. So once your bolt or once your rivet nut's installed, um, your bolt will sit right in the center of these slots and you'll have adjustability both ways. Okay, we have our holes marked out. So we're gonna take the bracket back off to drill the holes. Okay, next we're gonna install the two stainless steel rivet nuts. We recommend you use one of these rivet nut installation tools to do this. It'll make your life way easier. So now that we have our rivet nuts installed, we'll go ahead and reinstall the bracket onto the snorkel and then install your bolts into the A-pillar. So now that the snorkel's installed, all we gotta do is we gotta put the inner wheel well in and the fender flare. So all the pop clips that we took out before. So you have your outside pop clips as well as all of the pop clips on the inside that we'll reinstall. So here we're gonna reinstall the fender flare. Make sure that the light bulb is fed through the hole. And then we can start to line up your clips. Once you have the clip snapped into place, we have the two Torx bolts. So you just install your air filter in your upper air box, being sure to be careful with this coolant line. Three snap clips on the back, and then we can Put this on, tighten your worm gear clamp. Lastly, we're gonna connect the quick disconnect fitting as well as plugging in your sensor and the clips for the wiring harness. So the last thing we wanna do is we wanna put the air duct for the air box back in. That's it? Once that, once, once that's done, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I ran out of words there. I'm uh, definitely putting that in there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're done, you're done.